thank you all so much for coming to Risk Five International Day. Um, my name is Thea Clay, and I'll be your hostess this afternoon and the rest of the, the evening. Um, I'm thrilled to introduce Mark Himmelstein, our CTO at the Risk Five International. And Mark, take it away. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, first, I just want to again thank everybody for being here. Uh, those of you who obviously uh, uh, were able to get up after last night and have some coffee, so I'm grateful for your being here, and again, grateful for the sponsors and the organizers. Um, but, you know, I think the conference has just been amazing. The conversations we've had, uh, both uh, in this room and outside this room, and um, uh, I, I really applaud uh, Christian and the whole gang uh, uh, for getting this together, so thank you. I'm going to start actually by the ask. You know, usually at the end you do the do the ask. I'm going to do the ask at the beginning. So uh, the ask is get involved, right? We had very strong voices yesterday. We need your voices at the table. That's really really important in the task groups, in the special interest groups, in the committees. As leaders, you're going to see a lot of boxes on here today that are um, been asked for, but they're an inception and we need leaders to go ahead and drive that. We also have a development partner program where uh, right now we have four development partners in Asia who help do the developer heavy lifting for um, getting us to ratification. We have acceptance criteria. Without them, we wouldn't be there. But one example is Rios Lab, which is uh, you know this joint venture with uh, Berkeley and, and Tsinghua University. They're doing the SAIL Golden Model and the architecture test for Vector. That's huge, right? It wouldn't have gotten done any other way. We need development partners in Europe. So it's some combination of professionals, professors, students, um, and uh, taking on projects on an ongoing basis. When ever in history has anybody who's been in graduate school had the opportunity to be at the ground floor of a new architecture? Uh, imagine saying that you wrote the architecture test for risk five vector. Uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. So, and you get to go to the meetings and hear what the conversations are. So uh, starting with the ask, uh, you're, you'll see the opportunities as we, we go along. So we're gonna talk a little bit about 2021, how we did it, and then what's going on in 2022. <clears throat> so look, we, we don't require that people report. So this is anecdotal. Uh, but all evidence is that over 12 billion RISC V cores got sold for profit last year. Um, success begets success, you know. Uh, this is exciting. I mean, obviously, a lot of the stuff that's showing up early are things that have short runways. So things like IoT, sensors, industrial controllers, computer controllers, you know, those kind of things. Uh, but they're heading towards, you know, laptops and data center servers and cloud servers and HPC and so on and so forth. So this is very exciting. Um, we expect that risk five will uh, be an economic boon for members, right? They make money on it. We want them to make money on it, right? This is an important number. This is what gets people excited. And so, uh, you know, this is uh, just an amazing number. I was astounded by it. Um, and again, it's anecdotal. I, I can't, you know, we, again, we don't, we don't require people to report. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're pretty sure that the number's in, in this ballpark. So, um, so really, take this back. Get people excited. This is a good thing. 16 ratified ISA specifications with 44 extensions. So a specification consists of multiple extensions. Uh, and in 2020, we um, ratified zero, uh, and in 2021, we did 16. An incredible tribute to the, uh, the committees, the task groups, all the people involved, the development partners to get this done. Um, just an astounding piece of work. And uh, there's more coming this month or, or next month, this month. Uh, we, we expect two or three new specifications that are heading towards the board of directors for ratification including the first non-ISA specifications. So the ISA ones are extensions, the non-ISA ones are things like 
UEFI or SBI or ABIs and stuff like that. And that stuff's going through. There's a ton of them coming out this year because in 2023, you'll see we're shooting for putting platforms out there that define, you know, rich OS environment, uh, microcontroller environment, and so on and so forth. And a lot of committees, SIGs, and task groups, you'll see in a second what the organization looks like, and we'll talk about it, but the idea was to get a scalable organization in place. This year, we're probably going to go north of 70 on the groups total. So how we did it. So um, it's hard for us to prioritize as engineers. We want to do everything, right? <laughs> Uh, but, you know, for example, security came in with Crypto Vector and Crypto Scaler, and I said, you can't do both. And they really needed Vector done in order to do Crypto Vector, so it became very clear that Crypto Scaler was the right thing to do. So those kind of decisions were not being made. They got made last year by the task groups, not by me, not by Callista, not by Krista. They got made by the task groups and, and teaching people we wanted to do less better as opposed to everything not happening, right? That was number one. Number two, the scalable organization. So you'll see in a second how we put that together. The idea is it can grow um, and we push power down. The idea is that we don't direct from the top. Um, we have some basic rules people have to comply, for, comply with. We have trust and verify, so there's check, you know, checkpoints and stuff like that. Uh, but the idea is that the, the low-level parts of the organization get to run their own show. Uh, acceptance criteria. I walked in the fir first day and said, okay, how do we know we're done with the spec? And people said, uh, I don't know. <laughs> so we created a thing called the definition of done. It's evolved into what we now call acceptance criteria. So before you go and actually start work, there's a plan milestone. You have to tell people what you're going to do. Uh, before you go to public review, there's a milestone that gets checked off by the committees and, and has acceptance criteria about what needs to be done there. Things like the basic GCC stuff, people can kick, kick the tires. Um, and then uh, before the ratification vote, there has to be a, a bunch of stuff done as well, including, you know, some legalistic things to make sure that, you know, we can attribute all contributions, uh, there's no encumbered information, stuff like that all the way to, you know, uh, architecture tests and, 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 and um, uh, formal models and compilers and operating systems. Leadership, so we recruited a lot of leadership last year. Um, a, a number of them are here and are talking today. So Philip's talking today, running the software uh, committee and um, Andy Dello is here uh, running the security committee. Uh, Everywhere we put a strong leader in place and recruited leaders, because some places were just gaps, um, progress happened. And so we're very excited about that, and we'll continue to do that this year. That's why it's important. People with strong voices in the room, um, you, you need to stand up and help us. That's how things get done. That's how you make changes. That's how you make history. Uh, contributor culture. So. Uh, the open hardware, open source hardware world is not where the open source software world is. So Linux in 2014, uh, you know, 80% of the contributors were paid for by their companies to work on Linux. You know, a lot of our folks were just, you know, not getting sleep, right? Ignoring their children and helping us. Uh, so we're trying to move more towards a contributor culture trying to influence the companies to, uh, you know, give their folks time in order to work on this stuff. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we originally, uh, you know, uh, um, attracted ISA architects, but we needed a huge amount of developers. So development partner programs part of it, but the task groups have also taken on a huge amount of work. So the people who did hypervisor, uh, folks like Anoop and um, uh, John Hauser, they, they did a, 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 just a yeoman's amount of work. And that's contributor culture. We want, you know, this to be done not by paid people, but by, by I mean, you know, not people that are paid by Risk Five International, but by people who are part of the community and uh, are excited about doing it the same way they are about Linux or Hadoop or Apache uh, and so on and so forth. And then finally, continuous improvement. Uh, we're never going to get everything right, okay? 
Uh, we, we, we work to not be defensive. We work to accept ideas. And, um, and we're very happy if you see something we can do better. So uh, we've worked very hard to make that part of our culture. And as a result, we made a lot of progress. And you saw that progress on the previous slides. So why RISC V? Just to repeat, just so everybody knows. So I have this uh, debate with Dave Patterson. Cost number one, that's Dave Patterson's cost number one. I look at flexibility. I hear every conversation about, hey, I was able to do this. Hey, I was able to do that. That is a very close second. Um, there, there's no extra cost to customize. You know, you can do anything you want with RISC V and, and not abide by the rules and just use the stuff. You, you just can't brand, but, but you can use it, right? We don't stop you, right? There's flexibility, ultimate flexibility. And, you know, people are starting to see that if they're doing something that's becoming a sedimented item, um, it's better to get it into the community and support it by the community. The reason we're a community at all is the ecosystem. It's too expensive for any company to go ahead and do all the pieces. You know, compilers and operating systems and architecture tests, we share that burden. That's why we're together, is to share that burden. And it's really important to understand that, um, that, you know, we're here to, to help make that happen. Uh, and therefore, it becomes attractive for people to be part of RISC-V. We're at a unique position in history. We get to stand on the shoulders of giants. You know, Linux came before us. It set the standard on contributor culture and open source. Um, and we get to really draft off that. We get to learn from that. Every person with uh, any kind of, of, of age, you know, cut their teeth on ARM or x86 or Power or MIPS or, you know, Spark. So we also get to, you know, draft on that position as well. We get to see what everybody did in the past, and it's very exciting because it enables us to s sort of shorten the way uh, to make products that are useful for, for folks. We have an EDA renaissance that's occurred over the last 15, 20 years. Chiplets and modular stuff, it's a lot easier to plunk down a piece. So you hear people doing, you know, controllers for computer systems or disk drives, and they have, you know, I don't know, two, three, ten, Risk five processors doing dedicated things, so the, it, it's just a, an amazing thing, and that's fueled a lot of this, um, uh, the, the use of Risk five uh, over the past year. And then finally, the thing that's not quantifiable is pride of ownership. There were a lot of operating systems at the time Linux came out that were open source. Um, there are a lot of operating systems today that are better than Linux. Uh, why do people use Linux? Part of it is, they feel like it's theirs. It's their house. They're proud of it. It may not have everything perfect today. It gets better all the time. Uh, I, in, in 2019, I, I got a, a Tesla partially to see what, what, what it was about. And I wake up and all of a sudden there's like changes and it's better, right? You know, it's like, hey, there's some new feature. Linux is the same way, right? Things are getting better all the time. Same thing's true with RISC V. And so there's this, you can see it's the only um, uh, open source hardware chip of this magnitude that was grown and born in open source. So. So uh, this is the high level technical or organization. Uh, the board of directors uh, enables the technical steering committee to drive everything technical inside of RISC V. There are two IC committees, ISA committees, uh, and they handle all the ISA um, extensions. Uh, you'll see that there's two new SIGs in there, the vector SIG, which is going to handle everything SIMD going forward and driving that, and the FP SIG. So uh, Anybody saw two days ago, there's like, you know, three different floating point formats that people are doing. So we're bringing those folks in. We, last year we did ZFH, the, the half uh, precision IEEE floating point. This year we'll do BFLOAT 16, but we need to have the discussion about 256 bit, right? So on and so forth. Um, the green is done. The white is stuff that's underway. Uh, and so it's very exciting what's going on. 
The HCs are horizontal committees, and they're drawn that way as a visual cue. Everything in a horizontal committee has to, uh, uh, I mean, everything in, in the ISIS stuff has to talk to the, the, the horizontal committees. So if you're doing vector and you don't check with security and you create a hole, that's bad news, right? There are checkpoints. These milestones I talked about before, the committee chairs have to sign off at each of the three milestones. And that is uh, a really check and balance and very exciting for us. We split software this year. So uh, Phillips here, he ran the software committee. It got huge. We split it into two. He's acting here. We're looking for a chair of this. So this is more systemsy stuff, operating systems and platforms and, and so on and so forth. I think it's pretty understandable. Components, interfaces, operating systems, platforms, the most interesting kind of, you know, off the beaten path thing, but that's basically all the pieces you need in order to support a rich OS or all the pieces you need to support a bare bones microcontroller environment. Um, to this year we're working on SEE, the supervisor execution environment that goes back to wording in the UMPRIV spec. Um, and that has all sort of the uh, UEFI, SBI kind of stuff that the platforms will be based on in 2023. And you can see dotted lines here um, we're kind of a matrix organization. Uh, you always have to have these checks and balances, but there's some times when you have to more, work more closely. So for example, the app TEE, so the application level trusted execution environment, has to talk more closely to this platform software committee uh, than even uh, the normal standards would require. And you'll see, see this throughout the whole thing. We also have VTGs here. These are some things that uh, we, <laughs> Uh, we've been using for a while, but neglected to, to ratify. So, uh, and, and we um, uh, didn't necessarily have committees in place. So PLIC has, has been there for a long time. Uh, UFI and SBI uh, are things that are underway and, and we're working on getting those ratified this year. And then uh, um, uh, Philip is driving the application and tools horizontal committee with David Chen from Alibaba. Uh, and again, pretty, understandable columns, applications, libraries, runtimes, tools. And again, you see the dotted lines in various places. You see SIGs and TGs. What's the difference? A SIG is something that is responsible for developing strategy, gap analysis, and prioritization. It is the continuity for a topic. It lives forever, potentially. I mean, it could be disbanded, but in general, it lives forever. The TGs are, have individual little tasks. You create a spec, you disappear, right? So uh, most of the TGs are spawned by work that's done by the SIGs or the committees. Um, two big ones that have shown up this year, SOC infrastructure and security. Uh, we have a chair of SOC infrastructure. We're working on a vice chair. Uh, uh, Andy Dello is going to talk today. He's the security chair, and we have Manuel Offenberg, who is the vice chair from uh, 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 Seagate Research. And they are hitting it out of the park, both groups. And you can see that they have a bunch of SIGs in place, and the idea is that the SIGs are going to spawn TGs. Incredible conversations going on. One of the things I want to point out, security model, that just got kicked off. That's the one ring to bind them. That's the one that tells you, hey, it's not just this threat, it's you need these to handle these five threats together in order to have a successful solution in a Linux rich OS kind of environment. Um, on the SOC infrastructure side, uh, we moved RAS underneath here. It was a separate uh, committee before, uh, but they have kicked off and you can see the things that are f falling underneath it. There's just a huge amount of work there in order to make uh, uh, this a, a robust solution. IOMMU, you're going to hear Perrine talk today, and that's going to be very exciting to hear, hear about what's going on there. Uh, and these are, uh, uh, you know, really two of the other committees. The ISA infrastructure supports all the ISA work. Uh, technology sectors uh, really is, is a, a dotted line environment. So all the things you need in order to make embedded successful, all the things you need in order to make HPC successful. John Davis, who was supposed to be here, I ran his, his session yesterday, runs the, um, the HPC stuff. Uh, Michael Wong from, from CoPlay runs the data center, SIG, and we have some more that we're hoping to start. 
Um, one of the things I will tell you is we need somebody to run the documentation SIG. So this has got to be someone with experience in, in putting together a hefty set of books, right? And uh, complex. And we want our, our documentation to be more readable, more navigable. We want it organized uh, more professionally. And so we need somebody to go drive that. So if you folks know somebody, please uh, help us uh, and, and point, point them out to us. And then the implementation is a virtual HC and it's an extra check off for cost benefit trade off on ratified specs. Um, how am I doing on time? 922. So I, I will do the rest of this quickly. <laughs> Profiles are kind of one of the most important things. Uh, so if you have a generational thing in, in x86 or, you know, a version thing in, in ARM, this is our similar thing. So there will be uh, profiles uh, for um, the stuff that was ratified in 2019 called RVA and RVM 20. Um, so it was ratified and done by the end of the year. So it starts in, in 20 and there's RVA and RVM 22. Uh, and we're planning on sort of doing more forward looking for RVA and RVM 23. Uh, so this is a set of extensions together that work together well. And some things are required and mandatory, some things are optional, uh, and we're, there's, uh, it, there's a document that's actually out for uh, internal review, so not public review, but internal review uh, that's out on, the, on GitHub. And so that's very exciting that's going on right now. Uh, it's taken about a year and a quarter to birth this document. And so it's really important in the end, we want the compilers to take dash RVA, you know, 22U64, so U mode 64. We want to take those kind of, of, of flags as opposed to each individual extension. Um, <coughs> the uh, platform stuff I talked about already, I won't talk about it again. Uh, there's a bunch of ISA extensions that were underway last year. We're gonna work on getting them ratified this year. Uh, the one that's on the way right now is ZMO, which is just the multiply part of multiply and divide, and uh, folks in embedded really want that because they don't want to do divide. I don't want. <laughs> uh, but beyond the backlog, we want to start taking a look at things holistically. What are all the things that are needed for automotive? What are all the things that are needed for data center? That's really important. That's where we're heading. Um, there are some ISA gaps. Uh, we talked about 128 in a number of places uh, this week. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff in security you're going to hear about later, uh, and then you're going to hear about software ecosystem very shortly with uh, Philip. Um, I'm just going to flash this up. We're going to see this later. Um, and apologies, Calista, I didn't get to update this one. Uh, and and th this just gives you an idea about how full we're getting of, of all the pieces uh, that are needed in order to be successful as a deployer of a RISC-V product. Uh, this is uh, a derivative of Ventana's slide from the summit in 2020. And these are actual you know, solution stacks that are there today, they're available, right? It's not something that you have to erect or set together, it's there, right? So this is very exciting as well. Uh, there's a lot more. We just didn't have time to actually put them on a slide, so I apologize. Uh, but, uh, you know, as you imagine, just like with any other architecture, once you go to a high-level language, the porting happens very easy. So roadmaps, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these. Um, the ISA committee has a, a bunch of stuff, and you can see there's SIG work, so the vector and floating point SIG I talked about. Uh, there's task group work. Um, this is both priv and unpriv together, uh, a bunch of stuff that we're doing. And look, we don't hold people's feet to the fire. We are a community and, uh, you, you know, we are open source. So if we don't exactly make this, that, that's the, the way it happens. But we ask them to project. And so their goals are to uh, reach these things. So you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff that we know of today that's going to be uh, ratified in 2022. Um, Tools and performance, I'm gonna let um, uh, Philip talk about that in his uh, talk. Uh, platforms as well, have him talk about that. Um, 
applications. Again, Philip's going to talk about that. Uh, Andy's going to talk about this roadmap, but look at all the things on this list. Like, get excited about this. I mean, you know, we know security is a big deal, and these uh, folks have really gotten the ball rolling. And I've been to some of these meetings, and the quality of the conversations is incredible. So if you're interested in security, get involved with this. And this is just another review of that. Uh, SOC just started up, so they're just trying to get theirs in place. So RAS, IOMMU, quality of service, performance monitoring and tracing. So all those things fall under this. The current debug stuff and trace stuff all fall under this. So eTrace and Nexus. So uh, look for this to be embellished over a period of time. And then the ISA infrastructure group, SAIL, Spike, um, uh, some of the, you know, we're trying to get labs in place to do regression testing and to do sandboxing um, and, um, and the architectural compatibility test. So we're very excited about the work that's being done here. And finally, the call to action. Join, contribute, make history. Risk five everywhere. Thank you all.